Rick Reyna, Mark Meckler, Jesse Duplantis, and Hank Kuhneman. That begins at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central. And then join Kelly Copeland and her guest, Carla Shellis, as they share how to free yourself from the past and become free in the presence of God. That's tonight at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. And on the Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, he shares how Joseph allowed character, integrity, and trust in God to help him achieve his dream. That's tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Central. There's so much happening here on the Victories Channel. So for more information, take a look at our program schedule by going to GoVictory.com. That's GoVictory.com. I believe you're going to have a blessed evening, everyone. And remember this, Jesus is Lord. I'm Pastor George. Join me on Tuesday nights starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central as we go inside the vision. From the revival capital of the world, this is Victory. Good evening, everybody. It's Monday night. It's time for Flashpoint. We're glad you're with us. Uh, and we've got a lot to cover tonight, but we want to start off uh, with some sad news. Sad for us, great for Jerry Savelle, uh, but our friend, Dr. Jerry Savelle, went to heaven this morning, and we, while we celebrate his home going, he will but surely be missed. I want to read a statement from our founder, Kenneth Copeland, about his friend, Jerry Savelle. Jerry and I have been preaching together for over 55 years. We've never had a crossword between us. Our families are intertwined with each other. He was my first preaching partner other than Gloria. He began in this ministry by driving me to my meetings, setting up the equipment and making the tapes. His first assignment was during the Jesus Revolution. He won so many to the Lord at Pismo Beach, California. Jerry Savelle is now in heaven with his Savior. He will always be dear to my heart. Uh, we surely will miss our friend Jerry Savelle, but I wanted to give you, uh, Brother Jesse, uh, an opportunity. You guys were close. I want to give you an opportunity to say what you need. Well, Jerry Savelle should have been my brother. Uh, we were so close, you couldn't put a razor blade between us. And I mean, not only we preached together all these years, but uh, I mean, he's been to my house. We would just have more fun. And I, I like I'll say, I'm gonna just say what Jerry said, I will not grieve for him because Jesus bore our grief and took our sorrow. But we had some of the most wonderful times from preaching this glorious gospel to riding motorcycles to everything you could possibly think of. In fact, uh, not too long ago, I talked to him actually two days ago. He told me, he said, you know, Jesse, you need to change your name to Jerry Sa Jesse Savelle Duplantis. He said, I'm going to change mine from Jerry Duplantis Savelle because we should have been brothers. And that really is true. So, Jerry, if you're hearing me, I, I want to let you know, uh, Congratulations, you have arrived. And I'm going to tell everybody, this man, Jerry Savelle, has not passed away. He has arrived. And that's what we all look forward in that wonderful and glorious day when we will see him again. And yes, I will miss him greatly, and I mean that sincerely. And I talked to Brother Copeland this morning. I said, we've been preaching together so long, not expecting this to happen in any way, shape, or form. And in fact, two days ago when I talked to him, he said, man, I got to get to New Orleans to eat some gumbo. I need some gumbo here. I said, come on, son, I'll get you some gumbo and all that kind of stuff. And we just laughed and had a wonderful time. But today is in heaven and rejoicing with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to, to the Savelle family, we are here for you. You call at any time, day, night, I don't care what time it is. If you need, uh, Carolyn, if you need me and Kathy, we are there. And I mean that, and that's also to Terry and also to Jerry Ann. And he's just such a blessing of the Lord. And if you're looking at the screen, I was there when he rode that motorcycle. I can remember all that just like it was yesterday. And you know what? I tell you what, if you want to see him again, you got to get born again. And I'll tell you this, he's got tapes and books and everything out there. And I don't care if Jesus tarries 100 years, Jerry Savelle's teachings will always be prevalent and it'll be on time at the right place at the right time. And that's what I think about my friend and my brother, Jerry Savelle. Yeah, amen. In 55 years uh, with this ministry, uh, preaching, he was on staff for a while. And of course, then he went out on his own. Uh, the Savelle family is near and dear to all of us. 
here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries and the Victory Channel. Uh, but one thing that we remember, uh, Pastor Hank, about Jerry Savell, Jerry Savell knew how to dress really well, didn't he? <laughs> Yes, he did. In fact, I remember the first time I met him, it was uh, Brother Richard Roberts, my dear friend, that introduced me on a surprise dinner. I walked in, and Brother Jerry reached his hand out, and he goes, nice to meet you, Brother Kenneth Copeland, Jesus is Lord. And I started laughing, and I took a step back, and he goes, no, Hank, it really is nice to meet you, but he always dressed nice. I commented one time. He said, hey, he goes, I know, because if you've seen me, and he points up, you seen my dad. It's all in our genes. <laughs> and, uh, but I got to say this one thing about Brother Jerry very quickly, and that is back in 1989 when Brent and I were first um, in married, even when we were engaged, we would come on Sunday night. I'd go to her house when we would watch the Believer's Voice of Victory. Uh, Brother Copeland was the first one I heard. And then one night there was a man preaching, Jerry Seville, and he preached a message that changed my life. It was back in like 1989, and it was this, if the devil cannot steal your joy, he cannot keep your goods. And Brother Jerry, if you can hear me, thank you for your love, but thank you what you imparted into my life. What a great man of God. He will dearly be missed. And lastly, I always want to know what oops, I think it was oops, look like. You remember the story he talked about oops that pulled out that money when he couldn't afford his uh, one meeting? I think it was in like a uh, wash machine place or something like that. And I always loved hearing him tell his stories. And he always brought me to a whole nother level of faith. And I owe my word of faith background to him and Brother Copeland yeah. as well. Amen. Amen. And, and I too have uh, great memories. Uh, the last time we were trying to buy a house and uh, Jerry Savell, we weren't trying. We had tried to buy a house and they turned down our offer. They got a different offer. And he preached on church Sunday morning about uh, standing up and saying, Lord, I, he was talking about his own land and the deals that he had made. Saying, oh, that's the house I want. I need to have that house. And when you know what, that afternoon we got the call, the house was available and we moved into it. It was a great, so great lessons of faith. Of course, Brother Copeland does that, but Jerry Savelle had his own way and boy, we, he will definitely be missed, but we celebrate where he is. I, that's why death has no sting is because we know where he is. And today, he was, he was somewhere preaching the gospel and he went home. What a better, could not have been a better way to go. So thank you, Jerry Savelle. Jerry Savelle, 1946 to 2024. Let's go to Mike. Garofalo with today's top story. Mike. Gene, a meeting of Israel's war cabinet concluded this afternoon in the wake of Saturday's massive missile and drone barrage initiated by Iranian forces. Now, according to the Times of Israel, a Channel 12 report out of the Jewish state claims a decision was made by the war cabinet to hit back clearly and forcefully with the understanding that Israel will not allow an attack to take place without a response. However, the Times report also made it clear Israel does not want to spark a wider regional conflict or shatter the coalition that stopped Saturday's strike from Iran. Israeli, American, British, French, Jordanian, and Saudi forces effectively repelled close to 300 missiles and drones that were used to try to attack Israel on Saturday night. Defense systems were activated, the threats were intercepted, and Iran's attack on Israel failed. Operation Iron Shield proved the strength of our ironclad cooperation. Lieutenant General Herzi Halavi went on to thank all of Israel's international partners for standing up to Iran's aggression. He went on to say Israel is closely assessing what to do going forward and they remain at their highest level of readiness. Iran will face the consequences for its actions. We will choose our response accordingly. Now, as for the phone call Joe Biden had with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu on Saturday after the Iranian attack was repelled, during an interview with CNN, Florida Senator Marco Rubio accused the president of sharing the details of the call in order to appease anti-Israel pro-terrorist activists. Gene, back to you. Mike, I hear the Speaker of the House has something to say about supporting Israel today. Gene, just a short time ago, according to Politico, Mike Johnson told lawmakers a few hours ago, as I said, he will try to pass four separate funding measures this week. Now, one's going to be reportedly for Israel, one for Ukraine, one for Taiwan, and one for a lend-lease deal for military aid, which would also include a ban on TikTok. Gene. 
Thanks, Mike. Keep us updated. All right, uh, let me go to you, Mark Meckler, uh, out of that. Now, something that stood out to me about this attack, and if you were watching uh, Victory Channel this weekend, we covered the attack live, and we will continue. If ever you're wondering what's going on, we're still Victory News and Flashpoint. We're going to cover these things as they happen when we feel it warrants letting you know. All right, so keep that in mind. All right, but Mark, uh, what we saw, what we did not see is we did not see Saudi Arabia coming alongside. We not see Dubai. We didn't see uh, any of these other countries uh, coming alongside uh, Iran's attack. What does that say to you? Yeah, it says that they understand the reality of the situation. There is a divide between Shia and Sunni, and the Sunni Arab states are on Israel's side. They understand that that's where their future is. We've seen the Abraham Accords during the Trump administration. Saudi Arabia was close to entering into one of those agreements. They understand the reality, and Iran is going to be on the losing side of this equation. Let me read this from Representative Elise Stefanik. She said, as the American people watch in horror as Israel faces unprecedented attacks from Iran, Joe Biden in the White House shamefully called a lid and refused to address the nation and the world. Their silence is deafening. Of course, on the contrary, President Trump speaking to the American people in Pennsylvania, where he's making it unequivocally clear America stands with Israel and condemns Iran's heinous attacks. Jesse, what does this say to you about the Biden administration? Well, the Biden administration, I mean, he got to go take a nap. They just need to go, they need to just get out of office because they they made us the weakest nation you've ever seen. What I don't understand, we know Iran is half crazy because they call us the, the great Satan. Well, I, I think they are. But when are we going to stand by and let them have nuclear weapons? Ladies and gentlemen, they're going to shoot at us. So I, I, if I was president, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be 24 hours. Then nuclear, everything they have nuclear would be gone. I would put it out. And I wouldn't worry about what anybody says because they already shout death to America and this to that and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I would take that thing out and, and I, I wouldn't play games with this because, you know, it, if you wait long enough, they're going to have nuclear uh, missiles and they're going to shoot them because they're just that crazy. So I would just do that. And, and, uh, and uh, nobody wants to start a world war. But I've learned something about this, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you something. China, Russia, and when it all gets down to the end of it, they're not going to lose their countries because we attack Iran. They may say, we, you know, they, they may say all kind of stuff. But when you get to this level, and, this, and thank God that we, we helped Israel repel it, and it was a blessing of the Lord. But they need to hear more than that. I think America needs to stand up, and Biden needs to go home. You see what I'm saying? Or, or at least do something. Flip flops constantly. One minute he's with Israel, next minute he's, th he's talking about Hamas and all this kind of stuff because he's worried about those votes of these people that are in America. I would tell the people in America, and I believe in freedom of speech, but if you say death to America, go to the country you came from and you say it there. You don't say it here. Uh, amen. And, and we're seeing, even on the mainstream news this morning, I saw of uh, in New York City uh, classes classes on how to speak Farsi and speak death to America. This, this, is, uh, this is the time that we're living in. All right, let me show you this before I go to a prophetic word from Hank Kuhneman. This is uh, Senator Tom Cotton posted this. Uh, President Biden telling Israel not to respond after Iran's attack is shameful and strategically wrong. America should fully support Israel, not undermine it. Watch. I first want to commend the bravery and skill of American and Israeli pilots and other troops and troops from friendly nations like Saudi Arabia and Jordan and Great Britain who helped uh, intercept almost every single one of more than 300 drones and missiles shot at Israel. But of course, President Biden is wrong telling Israel that they should respond. Imagine America getting 300 drones and missiles shot at our homeland and having a country telling us not to respond. Now, it's up to Prime Minister Netanyahu and his war cabinet, and ultimately the elected government and people of Israel about how and when they respond. It's hard to imagine this doesn't steal their resolve to finish the job against Hamas in Gaza uh, or to refuse to tolerate Hezbollah, Iran's proxies to its north in Lebanon, possessing more than 100,000 rockets and missiles and drones on its own, and ultimately to tolerate Iran with a nuclear weapon. Imagine what last night would have looked like if Iran was shooting nuclear armed missiles into Israel. Uh, all right. 
Mark, I want to ask you a question. It, you know, now I'm just getting your opinion. I know you don't know facts here on, on how somebody else thinks. But if you're if you're Iran, do you think this was just to show force, or were they testing the waters? Was this saber rattling of some sort? Because the jury's still out. We we know that Israel's going to respond somehow, some way. Your thoughts? Yeah, my opinion is primarily it was for domestic consumption in Iran. And the reason we know that is they launched drones and uh, ICBMs and other missiles from Iran, giving plenty of time for Israel and her allies to respond. If they were serious about doing damage to Israel, I'm not saying this wasn't dangerous or serious, but if they're really serious about doing damage, they would have had a Hezbollah launch. Hezbollah has somewhere in the neighborhood of 150,000 rockets, over 50,000 of them with targeted guidance systems. It would have been impossible for Israel to knock all of those down. And I think they had to show their domestic population that they were serious about responding to Israel, but to do so in a way that they hoped that Israel would not respond forcefully. Well, we'll, we'll definitely see that. All right, let me show you this prophetic word, and I get Pastor Hank to comment on it. I want to read you just a piece of it. Uh, this is from October 15th, 2023. And so my spirit shall restrain, I shall strain, restrain the mouth of the dragon. I'll restrain the claws of the bear, and I shall once again put my thumb upon the mouthy one who will raise his lips and his mouth in North Korea. And God says, I'll say to you, Iran, you will try, and there will be that which will be seen in the air. But I will strike down the attempts that you will be uh, put in your place, and you will be embarrassed. That will lead to a great uprising within your nation, Iran, that will cause a regime change that the earth will see and behold that God is the God of the kings of the earth. Let me read this last part. What are you looking at? What are you expecting? What do you believe the outcome shall be of the events that are in the earth? I've already told you I have promised something to honor, to the honor of my son and his blood. Pastor Hank, uh, your comments. Well, I think first and foremost, the Lord has been dealing with, you know, us that this is, was coming, these strikes against Israel. And I think about a prophecy that I have here. I'm just glancing at April 16th of 2023. And the Lord said that there would be strikes that would come against Israel and there would be the sound of war that would come against them. But God said, April 16th of 2023, that this would not be the war to end all things, that we, the people of the earth, would see the power of God. I look at another prophecy, April 7th of 2024. This is a week before God said, he's prophesied prophesying about preservation in the earth. And all of a sudden he switches and God begins to prophesy about Iran that would raise their head in this time and not to be moved by it because it would cause a retaliation by the hand of God to protect Israel, but to deal with the headship of Iran. And that's what you're seeing, even with the prophecy that you shared from, I think it was 2023, October 15th. God is saying he's going to protect Israel. He's going to strike down their enemies. And what we cannot have is the mouthy spirit like what was on Goliath, where Israel or the United States, who are Israel's allies, do what Israel did when Goliath was shooting off their mouth. They did nothing. They stayed in there. Even King Saul, they were afraid until David arose and said, you know what? To Jesse's point earlier, we are going to do something about this taunting of this Goliath, this enemy, and we're going to cut him down. And once David rose up on behalf of the nation, the rest is history. And God did something powerful, and he's going to do it again. So don't be in fear, those of you that are watching, God has this, and war is real, but listen, so is the divine intervention and preservation of God, and we need to continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but also for God's mighty hand, because he is judging and dealing with wickedness in this hour, and bringing about such a glory that is going to give, in that prophecy, the harvest to Jesus that he deserves the biggest one this right. earth has ever seen. All right, Mike Garofalo's got an update. Mike? Gene, this just came down. Uh, House has overwhelmingly approved Iranian sanction bills after the attack on Israel. Once again, the House has just, just a few minutes ago, approved sanctions against Iran. I don't know the specifics on the bills, but I know there are three of them. Gene? Uh, all right, let me go to you, Mark. Uh, out of that, I mean, these sanctions with Iran, uh, do you think they're, are they going to be a... Uh, 
of course, we don't know exactly what they are, but do you think it's just uh, smoke and mirrors? Are there, is it really going to have any bite to it? Well, I think likely coming out of the House, they'll have bite to it. Will Joe Biden sign them? That's really the big question. Biden has released billions upon billions of dollars to the Iranians. Every missile sent into and every drone sent into Israel was uh, made with American dollars. So the question is, will Biden actually sign them? And then is that going to be enough to stop Iran? I think we do have to try to cripple their economy. Uh, true. All right, let me show you this from ABC News about Biden said, no, don't. But they did it anyway. Watch. The president also called on Iran not to retaliate, but they did anyway. What does that tell you? Well, again, uh, uh, what it tells me, as I looked at last night, what it tells me is that uh, we, we can make good on our commitment to defend Israel. It tells me that Israel does have superior military capability. Just think about the hardware that Iran threw into the sky uh, and how little damage that caused. I mean, that's a real testament to how strong the IDF is. All right. Well, of course, it wasn't all just the IDF. However, if you're someone that knows how to tell when someone's lying, there was a great example of a lot of tells in the way he did that. Okay, uh, but I'll move along. I know RNC researchers, uh, research post this from Senator Marsha Blackburn. Under President Trump, Iran was broke. President Biden gifted them billions of dollars and then naively said, don't. Don't is not a foreign policy, Jesse. Uh, I think that was very well put. Your thoughts? But I tell you what, I believe what she said is the truth. I think not only that we need to deal with our Iran, but we need to deal with Hezbollah. We need to deal with their little fingers. You see what I'm saying? And I mean, you know, I heard a while ago they said they got a hundred and something thousand rockets and you can't hardly defend it. And I understand that that all goes off at one time. But it don't take much to knock this thing out. It's just got to have somebody got enough guts to stand up and look the devil in the face and say, this is what's going to happen. And we have the power to do it. And I know some people say, well, our, our military is weak. Our military is may be weaker than it was under Trump, but our weapons are not. We got some powerful weapons. And I really believe this with every vibe of my being. China ain't going to say nothing, and neither will Russia, because if they start really popping off and everybody really get angry, I'm not believing for World War III, but I've learned something, that these countries, they want to make money. They want to do different things. And they'll let, go, they'll let Iran go by the wayside real quick, as long as they, their economy is not touching all these other other things. And, you know, because these people don't have any morality whatsoever at all. They talk about God, but they kill babies, cut their heads off like Hamas did, put them on sticks, and it's just ridiculous. So all that's coming out of this is nothing but demonic lies. A lot, just complete demonic lies. What we need is strong leadership. Someone that can just look, just like Jesus, and told the devil, no. And the Bible said Jesus defeated him and he left him for a season. And if you look at a season, that's about three months. You can beat that devil up so bad he can't go nowhere. And I think we have the ability. And I'll tell you what, if we won't do it, if we let Israel, Israel will do it if we let them, you know. But I mean, it, we, it, we, we get involved in a lot of times with their business that we shouldn't get involved in. But I mean, I don't want to hurt nobody. But when you're dealing with a demon, you know, you're not going to get a demon saved. No. You're not going to get the devil saved, no. see? So you got to you got to show him some power. And I, that's what I believe. And I mean that sincerely. These people, you give them the ability to get nuclear weapons, these these devils will shoot them. Now what we're going to do? How many of them they going to go How many of them are nuclear warheads? We don't know. They'll shoot a bunch all at one time. So while they don't, you handle that. Why wait to get a, all, a bunch of people get killed at a cross section when you ought to put a red light? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the red light. It's time for the world to stand up and, and understand what America stands for. We don't want to get involved in your business, but we're not going to let this kind of stuff happen. I take out Hezbollah. I take out the Hutus, whatever their names is, all of them, real quick. And you break their fingers first, big around or shut its mouth because it knows they get it next. But I would not be 24 hours if me. I would take out that nuclear capability if it was up to me today. And That's brother, good. that will say some things. That's me, though. You know what I'm saying? You can tell I'm a little irritated about it, but my God, these people will do these things. They will. And so what are you going to wait for? You're so right. some children to die when they don't have to? That's right. Makes That's sense right. to me. All right. Well, I want to show this because I think this really says a lot. And Mark, and I, I see you, Pastor Rank. I know you got a comment. Uh, but I, I think this is really interesting to me. So after Iran had launched hundreds of of drones and missiles, what do you think the people of Iran would do? Well, they went to fill up with gas. 
Look, you're seeing that's a shot from around people lining up to get gas at the gas station. Uh, what do you think, Mark? Is that them uh, expecting a retaliation really fast or the gas drying up? Oh, yeah, that is what they're expecting. And people expect that perhaps Israel is going to go after the oil refi refineries in Iran and shut down their economy, infrastructure hits. So people are very concerned, and rightly so, they should be. And Israel is going to have to do something serious to show that it can and will respond to such an attack. Yeah, amen. All right, Pastor Rank, I know you got a comment, but I want you to pray over this uh, Israel and yeah. Iran attack and all the yeah. people that are involved. Go ahead. All right. Well, let me make a very quick comment. I think what we have to remember is, you know, I ran into somebody who said, well, what are we going to do? This Biden administration, you know, if you bless Israel, you're blessed, you curse them, you're cursed. We're, we're in trouble. I said, wait a minute. What about all the seeds that President Trump sowed towards Israel during his administration? God counted that. And we're going to see preservation. So we need to get on the side of faith and not on the side of fear. I want to also say this. Marilyn Hickey taught me something because she's been to Iran and he even China. She said there's a lot of praying Christians in Iran and in China. And God said something about Iran. He said, you will see as a sign that the veil upon the women's faces shall come off. And when you see that happen, get ready. Iran would raise their head and begin to come against Israel. This is all documented prophecies. And God said, but when you see it, I will use it to honor the praying church in Iran as well, that there is going to be a regime change and a great shakeup that'll happen in Iran. And it's about to happen in China. Father, Psalm 121, we hold you to this, the God who does not sleep or slumber. You said, you are the God that keepeth Israel. And so we pray that you would keep Israel by the power of your hand and by the angelic hosts of heaven who are at your command. And we pray that you would release wisdom now to those in Iran or, or, or those in Israel right now, that there would be the wisdom of God, that they would be led by your spirit to know exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And God, it shall be with great force that shall back off the the bully and that Goliath spirit and bring down these principalities and powers that desire to bring the Middle East, but the nations into war. We speak and declare that the enemy and his power is restrained and bound, that he will not be able to preempt war. We pray for your mercy and lastly, your grace and preservation of all innocent involved, even in Iran and other countries, but also in Israel. May you bring the breakthrough. May you bring the divine preservation that is needed at this time that we will see the peace, your peace, shalom over Jerusalem, over Israel. And God, do not let the people be brought to fear, but to faith as we look up for our redemption draweth nigh as Yeshua taught us in Luke 21. Amen. Amen. I mean, well, earlier Amen. in the program, we were talking about Jerry Savelle and uh, Kenneth Coleman talked about him winning people at Pismo Beach was his first assignment. Well, with us tonight from California, Rick Reyna for Rally Ministries. You know, Rick, we were going to have you on to talk about revival happening in California. I don't, I really don't believe there's a better night than when we're mm -hmm. celebrating Jerry Savelle's home going to talk about a revival right back in yeah. California where so many things happen. Tell us what's happening there. Hey, Mr. Gene, so good to be with you here on Flashpoint. Yes, I'm telling you, Dr. Seville sold a seed when he was here in Pismo Beach. And I went with him one time to Pismo Beach. The spirit of revival is in California. God is looking for a people, Gene, that would stand up. I like what Brother uh, Jesse said right now. Somebody that will stand up and do something. Somebody with some guts. Well, Gene, God has called our ministry, Rally Ministry, this year to stand up and do something that other people are not doing. Gene, we're holding six Rally Californias. A, a Rally California is an event where we literally come into a city, a county, and we bring in all the churches, all the pastors for a one-day festival. And we're doing three things, Gene. You know, last year, Gene, you and your wife, Terry, came to this one. Uh, that was in Chino, California. And we're declaring three things. Number one, people need to get saved. Lost man, this is your day of salvation. And the second thing we're do doing, Gene, is telling the sick man, today healing has come to your city. 
Now, I'm excited about the third thing that God has called us to do. God said to raise up our voices and begin to declare the righteousness of God in California. God said we're going to flip California from the blue to the red. But we're going to do this, Gene, by rising up as the church, coming together, not fighting each other, but standing up for Mm -hmm. righteousness. And this is what we did last year in 2023. I'm excited, Gene. God spoke to us to pull the team together again. Right. Here we go. In That's 2024, right. we're rolling out the trailer, and we're going we're gonna to flip this city to the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. All right. So that's in California. Uh, If you want more information, they can go to uh, right there, rallymen.org. Rallymen, there's the cities. Let me, let me explain something. And thank you for mentioning Terry and I were there last year and there was something different. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to California. Is anybody, do they, do they really care about Flashpoint? You know, because you can't get much more conservative than us. And, uh, you know, I was encouraged by how many people I, I said, man, look at this. There's a whole lot more people here standing up for righteousness than a lot of us and the rest of the country think. This is why California is so important. Jesus Revolution. Remember that movie? The Jesus Movement. Yeah. So much of it birthed right there in Southern California. But you're going all over California. You got uh, Indio, Redlands, Placenta, uh, uh Carson, Chino, Carson. Bakersfield. I, I'm listen. If you're in California or Arizona, any of those neighboring states, you need to get to those. Find out more information yeah. uh, about it. Rick, are you excited about this? I tell you, Gene, I'm excited because uh, we got to do one of these last year, and and you were there, and I thought it was a one night deal. You know, God said do right. an outreach again, uh, so He gave us the idea, Rally California. But the day we did this rally last year, right when I walked on the stage, he said, oh, by the way, tell the people next year, you're doing six of these. I said, God, six of them? He says, yes, and I will give you churches (laughs) and pastors that will back you up. And you know what's amazing, Gene? It's election year. Yeah, it is. Somebody needs to stand up for righteousness. So we're, we're literally going throughout California and we're telling people not to vote for a candidate, but to vote righteousness. I like what Brother Copeland says, our vote is a seed. So we're traveling throughout California. We're going to stir the people up to start voting righteousness. And maybe you and Terry could come back and help us. Oh, do that. we'd Amen. love to. We'd love to. Thank you. Rick Rayner, rallymen.org. Find out all the information. Help support it. Even if you don't come, help them. Uh, evangelize California and we're going to see great things. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come up, you know, he's, he's going to try and come out of his shell a little bit, but hopefully Mike Lindell will have something to say after the break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. I just want to say a very great thank you to Flashpoint because Flashpoint has really been a catalyst, a true movement that God brought forward right during the pandemic, before it, during it, all of it. And many people have been sparked and inspired by the way Gene Bailey and the leadership here begins to speak the truth in the middle of a kind of a dark culture. But I got to tell you, Flashpoint has created a light in Goshen. It might be dark in Egypt, but it was light in Goshen. And let me say this also, many broadcasters have kind of found themselves following in the wake of this movement because it is a movement and God is calling people to stand up at this time. This is a modern day prophetic movement. It's a word from the Lord. And I want to encourage everybody who can to follow this, to stand with it, support Gene Bailey, become part of the Flashpoint Army. And I want to say a huge thank you to all of you that make this possible by standing with this awesome broadcast. Register today at 2024flashpoint.live. A call is going out for believers to rise up. It's time for action. Be who God says you are and transform the world around you. In Flashpoint of Revival, Gene Bailey, host of Flashpoint and Revival Radio TV, sounds the alarm for the church to wake up, get up, and suit up as a people ready to advance the kingdom in this critical hour. Many are waiting on God to send down revival, but God is waiting on the church to rise up. Order your copy of Flashpoint of Revival today.
And welcome back to the second half. I want to talk real quick about the book, Flashpoint and Revival. There's a section in here where he wrote about decisions, decisions. And listen, if there's any decision time, it's right now. Not even mentioning the election. There's a lot of decisions to be made. I want to read you this one little piece. Oral Roberts once said, a miracle is either moving towards you or it's moving past you. Along the same lines, Hebrews 2.1 says, therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we've heard lest we drift away. That's in the New King James. There's no sitting still in the kingdom of God. This is, I've, I must have been like at a Jesse uh, DePlanis meeting. There's no sitting still in the kingdom of God. And whether we catch the miracle coming toward us or whether we get close to the Lord or drift away, it's dependent on our decisions to do. So pick up your copy of Flashpoint of Revival. This is a very current book with what you and I are going through in America uh, and, and how America affects the world. Get your copy. You help uh, right there. GoVictory.com, FP Revival. Uh, Jesse, you believe that, don't you? I, be, I believe everything. I, I, it's just really the truth. I mean, you know, you got to understand, we should never, ever limit God on anything, mm -hmm. spiritual, physical, or financial, in every way, shape, or form. If he's the God that he says he is, and he is, he says, ask anything in my name. That's St. John 14, verses 12, 13, and 14. That's St. John 14, 14. He said, and I will do it. And people say, well, according to his will. Listen, it, you said that. He didn't say that. He said, ask anything in my name. So so I believe everything that's in that book and, and what Brother Roberts was saying, yes, let me tell you, there, there's a miracle in your mouth and we are catalysts for miracles and all we have to do is really something very simple. Believe it. That simple. Don't complicate it. Just believe it and it'll come to pass. All right. There you go. I think you need to get the book. Go get the book, yes. would you? Flashpoint of Revival. Get the book. There it is. Flashpoint of Revival. <laughs> Um, the Third Great Awakening and the Transformation of Our Nation. I'm going to get your copy. All right. Here we go. Mike Lindell, where have you been? I've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, give us an update. I know you got some news, please. Yeah, I've been so busy up with my pillow. That, you know, we're the biggest. The biggest attack, I believe, on, a, on any company in the history of the world. And uh, But we're getting through everybody by the grace of God and help with all of you out there. Promo code FLASH, by the way. Um, but uh, what's going on, everybody, right now, great news on a lot of fronts. Um, we The Supreme Court is going to be, um, on April 19th, this, come, this week here, they're going to be considering the big Supreme Court case we have with the machines where it all started back in uh, spring of 2022 when I was going state by state to get rid of these electronic voting machines. And, and uh, this case now is all the way to the Supreme Court. Remember, they threw it out on standing in Arizona twice. And they sanctioned the lawyers, including Alan Dershowitz, who's a Democrat, but Alan's a coward and he went the other way. Uh, but our great dogs, um, our great um, attorneys, uh, Kurt Olson and others, pushed it to the Supreme Court. So that's where we're at. And what they found, because they kicked it out on standing, this is very important, we were able to add evidence to that. And one of the things we found last November from two different groups coming in uh, after a, uh, almost a year of investigation, inside these machines are decryption keys. It's like having a bank vault with the combination on the vault, or if you have my, my ATM card, I write the password on the back. Um, and uh, or in any computer say here here's the password so this is really uh, something because the government deemed our elections critical infrastructure and this is perfect timing these nine justices they have families and this they know they save they have, we have to save our country and uh, I believe they're going to look at it and they're going to consider it and they're going to take it in and I'm praying it's a 9-0 vote because it's just common sense. Another thing that came out, Gene, today in the news, my cell phone case, which was also at the Supreme Court, that got denied today, everybody. And what does that mean? Well, that, as you all know, my phone was taken away about a year and a half ago at a Hardee's in Minnesota, and they never told me why. I said, well, I want, if it's for January 6th, I want to go there. I want, to, I want you guys to arrest me. I wanted to get the word out. I didn't care, and I don't. And the FBI went, no, 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 this ain't about January 6th, and we're not going to arrest you, but we're taking your phone. Well, they took it. So I took it to the Eighth, uh, the eighth Circuit in Minnesota, and those judges made a horrible ruling, and um, 
did not get my phone back or did not even find out why they took it in the first place, which we still don't know. My attorney on that, Pat McSweeney, said in his 56 years of being a lawyer, he said this is the only case he's had that is so bizarre that there was, they went against every precedence that was set which was hundreds of precedents that they put in this case across the country. And they went against it all. And I said, well, how do you explain that, Pat? And he said, Mike, it can only be explained in one word, lawfare. And your name, Mike Lindell, they want you silenced. And that's it. So I, want, I don't want everybody, that's all over the news. I don't want anybody to confuse that with the big case. Yes, I want my phone back and I want to know why they took it. So we're bringing that back to Minnesota to the original judge which the um, Eighth Circuit said we could, and we're going to find out why they took it in the first place. You just can't go around taking people's livelihoods just because I have a big voice and can tell everybody and fight this to the end. The uh, other people don't have that luxury or, or don't have the resources or the, the time to do this, but it's taking a lot of time, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. It's disgusting. Um, the last yeah. thing of the news, everybody, is, is we're going. I'm flying all the experts to Las Vegas from the Supreme Court case and the lawyers, we're having a, it's a two-day event. First day is uh, is all the constitutional sheriffs in the country. That's on the 17th. We're going to live stream it all day long on Frank's speech. And that's every sheriff has their power at the county level that we're working with. At that level, we're going to go to all 3,143 counties, by the way, with my teams from the county up. We're going to leave no county behind to get rid of these machines and go to paper ballots and count. The next day, April or April 18th, we're having a roundtable event and a big press conference, even CNN showing up, and this big roundtable event with the experts and the lawyers from the Supreme Court case, and Steve Bannon is going to be the moderator. And believe me, he'll ask the tough questions. He uh, He's still not totally a machine guy, as he says. So it's going to be a great week. Yeah, I, my, my suggestion is leave your phone with somebody else during all of that, uh, with CNN and everybody there. <laughs> uh, Mark Meckler, I, I mean, help me, help us at home to understand what possible valid reason would there be to keep his phone or to even take his phone. Yeah, I don't think there is one. And I think there there was one. They would have stated that there was one. Uh, and I was with Mike shortly after they took his phone. I remember being at an event with him and uh, he was pretty frustrated because his entire business, like so many of us, is run out of his phone. That's where all his contacts are. That's where his email is. And so they had that. They got into all of his stuff, and they've never said why. This is an outrageous abuse of process. We saw the same thing happen to James O'Keefe, a journalist. They broke into his apartment, took all of his computer equipment, never told him why, never returned it. This is straight up, as Mike said, lawfare of the worst kind, and it represents a fall of the republic if we don't do something to stop this. That's right. You know, Pastor Hank, this is uh, what, what we see, Mike, continue to go through time after time after time again is just like when we saw people that attended January uh, 6th and either some didn't even go in and yet they're being held. Others went in and turned around and walked back out. This is the uh, America that we're suddenly dealt with, Hank. Well, and I, I think we have to look at what happened in Judges 5 when the, you know, the nation was choosing new gods, taking shortcuts. Um, somebody rose. Deborah arose as a mother in Israel, and God used her to absolutely set the nation free. And I think about a prophetic word that God said before this decade. He said the decade would start off harsh, and then we would wind up in the rest. And look at what God does. He chooses a man, who Mike Lindell, to arise at this time, just like Deborah did. And notice what God did. The Lord used the word rest. He takes a man, Mike Lindell, and starts a pillow fight, so to speak. In other words, they started a pillow fight. God gets in the fight, I should say. But guess what, Mike? All of this that you've been standing for is going to bring not only yourself, but this nation into rest. And it's no coincidence that God gave you a wonderful, wonderful pillow company. I love your slippers. I love your pillows. But where you're going to go, watch, from the pillow fight to the pillow rest. And yeah. I think you are forerunning it right now on behalf of what God is going to ultimately do in this country. And God and I and others in this nation, thank you for entering into that fight for our country and for our children and their future. We are coming into rest. Yeah, amen. Now, Mike, as, as this unfolds, 
Uh, I, I, we want you to, you call me, you let me know, we'll put you back on because everybody wants to know what the latest is. Uh, anything that comes up that we can continue to keep America up to date with Mike Lindell, we want to do. Well, thanks, Gene. And please, everybody, keep the prayers that those nine justices, that they will accept this case. I mean, this is, it's, it's gone on too long where no judge in the United States has looked at any of, any of these election platforms based on merit. And it's about time. You said, the government said our elections were critical infrastructure. Well, those nine justices, please, we pray that they will accept the case and look at it. So thanks for having me on, and I'll keep you all updated. All right, before you go, uh, Jesse Duplantis, would you pray for our friend Mike Lindell? Yes, I certainly will. Father, I thank you for Mike. I thank you for his conviction. I thank you that he's believing and standing on the Word of God, and he's looking at the biggest devils this country has. Father, I ask you to grant him favor yes. because you put him in the business to, of rest. And you can't sleep good unless you got a good pill, and everybody knows that. So, Father, I ask you to grant his request, because it's a anything. That's St. John 14, verses 12, 13, and 14. Lord, let these, these justices accept this case, and God open their minds to see what this man is trying to do. And that's just simply to do fair elections in every which way, shape, or form. Father, I decree it, I declare it today, and I call Romans 4:17. He yes, ca I call you, those God. things would be not as though they were yes, for Mike so Lindell are. in his business, in his endeavors, and yeah. everything. And any money that was stolen from him through and have to pay for lawyers, bring it back 100%, Lord, because Thank he's you, doing yes. your work. He's doing yes. your work, and he stood that up when no one else well. would. And I thank you for it, and I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Jesse. Thank, thank you, you, Mike, uh, for coming yeah, on. Thank you. All right, speaking of other uh, cases that are crazy, let me show you this, uh, Greg Jarrett's latest Trump case. Watch. You know, but I must tell you, I've never seen such a tangled, torturous prosecution mm -hmm. that would be brought against no other person except Trump. It's, it's punitive, it's politically driven, brag, contorting the law, taking a business record misdemeanor barred by the statute of limitations, and magically inflating it into 34 felonies, as Eric Sean pointed out. To do that, he had to attach it to a supposed election law violation. Well, it's not. Federal Election Commission investigated, and they said this is uh, perfectly legal. It is not a campaign donation. The DOJ concluded there's no crime here. But, you know, enter Alvin Bragg, who's charging under federal law, even though he's a local prosecutor and has no jurisdiction and authority to do that. But the judge is letting him get away with it. So All right. Let me let me follow up with this with a quote from President Trump. Uh, he said, no matter how hateful and corrupt the communists and criminals we are fighting against may be, you must never forget this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. Uh, let me get your thoughts, Mark Meckler, on uh, on this whole little deal there with Trump. Oh, look, this is one of the most outrageous abuses we've seen in prosecution a former president being prosecuted under a law that doesn't apply to him and a law that doesn't make what he's doing into a crime. Uh, Alvin Bragg has never prosecuted this crime before. No one's ever prosecuted this crime before. It's invented and it is specifically intended as election interference. Yeah, without, without a doubt. You know, when you see the election interference, Jesse, this is a problem. It has not, the left, the liberal left wants us to go away so bad and they're just trying to hurry up. If they could make time go faster to November, they would. But yet we've got a few months here to, to get things back to paper ballots. Uh, but what do you see in the next few months? We think we're gonna see with all of this. Well, I tell you what, I think that this nation is in turmoil, completely turmoil. What I'd like to know is, they always say, and I hear it on all the stations, that no one is above the law. And President Trump uh, uh, is not above the law. Well, let me ask this question to people, and just, uh, just to think about this. You know, the Supreme Court said that uh, shut down giving all this money away to students. And I understand this, everybody's students wants their debt uh, canceled, you know, for colleges. Yet, President Biden is he's just ignoring that. Has anybody ever thought to maybe ignore this brag guy? 
You see what I'm saying? Now, that would shake up the world. Yeah, that we're a country of laws. Well, tell that to the president because the Supreme Court said he can't do that. So how come he can get away without doing it because he's president and President Trump can't? So I think what's going to happen is we are rushing through a cliff. Now, either we go over the cliff or we stop before we... Uh, before we fall. And it's time for the American people to stand up. I'm talking about on both sides, because if they'll do it to a conservative, they'll do it to a liberal. It don't make no difference. It just depends who's in there. My point is this. I really think that, uh, that you know, God is calling people to stand up and do something. And, you know, we talk, we talk, we talk, and we talk, and talk's good. Real quickly, i never forget when I was about 12 years old, I had a bully come in my face. And I was scared of him. I was 12 years old, and he was a big boy. And I thought he had four guys in his little gang. You know, I was raised on the streets of New Orleans. To make a long story short, he's slapping me around. And finally, I just had enough. And I did what King David did. I hit that sucker right in the head. And when I did, he went down. And the four guys that belonged to him came to me. You see what I'm saying? I'm not bragging about that. What I'm saying is we got to do something other than talk. And if we'll do it all as one, if people will stand up, if every conservative stood up and just say enough is enough, y'all trying to destroy this man, and that's talking about President Trump and his family, you can't do this. And you know, we're a country of laws. Don't misunderstand me. I believe that. But sometimes there's such a thing as civil disobedience. It's time to say this, and everybody knows this is wrong, but everybody's talking and not doing nothing. Talk's cheap, ladies and gentlemen. We need some action here. And I mean, I, I, I just do what you have to do. And, uh, you know, like they took Mike Lindell's phone away. Have you ever thought, I ain't giving you my phone. We'll take you to jail. Well, no, I ain't going to jail. Well, we'll you know, we'll shoot you. Well, hey, I got a gun, too. You want to talk? You want to dance? Now, I know that sounds hard. I know that's crazy. But what's happening is they don't care because nobody stands up for something. I'm well. tired of talking. And once I hit that big bully, that old boy became my friend. That's right. <laughs> I'll never forget that long as I live. So that's what I mean. I don't want to break the law, and I don't. I, I observe the laws of the United States. But when they're wrong, they're wrong. And if they tell me I can't preach no more, I'm going to preach. Well, you'll go to jail. Jesus went to jail. I don't care. I'm going to do something. You know, a fight you want, fight you're going to get. Because that's what's going to happen, see? And once people understand that, that we are the United States, we are the people, not them. They work for us, see? So we even have control on the money if we just go to the banks and get it. It would shake this country to its, to its shoes. And I'm not saying do that, what I'm saying is, but eventually we're going to have to do something instead of just talk. I'm Gene Bailey, and I approve his message. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Pastor Hank, we need to, we need, it's got to start with the church, and it's got to start with yes, pastors. And I know that we're, I, I'm still in it shock. Does. I keep thinking, we're, I know we're making headway. But then it seems like as soon as I find out we're making headway, then, you know, there's somebody that does something really stupid at a church, and it's the pastor usually that's showing that he's not a leader at all. If anything, if he's not woke, he's leaning woke and because uh, they're trying to protect their offerings. At least that's what it seems like. Um, speak to that. You're, a, you're the senior pastor. What do you do? Well, I just love Jesse's commentary tonight. I, I totally agree. We have got to stand up and we have to make a difference. I quoted to uh, Mike Lindell when I was talking about Judges 5, and that's one of the things you see in Judges 5, verse 2. Watch this, Pastor. It says, when the leaders of Israel bravely led, the people willingly followed. Here's the thing we have to remember when we are called as pastors or leaders. We are called to be servants. And if you're going to be a servant, you have to take on what Jesus did in the book of Philippians. He made himself of no reputation. If you're concerned about your reputation, you will never stand for what is right and what will cause ridicule or those to hate you or threaten you or such. The other thing is he began to humble himself. And I think there are some of us that need to humble ourselves and realize that in order to keep our country uh, in the hands of God and in the hands of moral rightness, we're going to have to humble ourselves, serve God and serve our country regardless of what they threaten, regardless of what they call us, because ultimately we have God's backing. Lastly, Pastor G, if I may, you had uh, the thing about President Trump. You know what's going to happen? I'm telling you, when they turn the heat up seven times hotter for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, guess what it did? It 
produce the fourth man like the son of God. The more they keep turning up the heat against President Trump, against uh, those in our country who are standing, it's going to continue God's divine intervention, and he's going to release his righteousness and his justice. And never forget what God said about these indictments, people. Watch this. He said they'll be like feathers, and one by one, they're all going to begin to fall. And we've seen it, and we're going to see it going forward. So stay strong, speak right, use your faith, and watch what God will do to show up in the times when it seems like the heat has been turned up hotter. All right, I want to show you this, uh, a couple of pictures here before we go off the air, um, just to show you the difference. Uh, I did not, you know, I think Jason called, found this. I just think this is amazing. All right, let me show you what President, this is President Trump when he was president. And you notice uh, how everybody's around the table there, the cabinet, and they're looking at each other and their name, their name plates are all facing uh, out, straight out. Uh, but now let's look at Joe Biden. All those names are, are, <laughs> are facing Joe Biden so he can remember um, he can remember the names of everybody there. Now, this is where inevitably I get upset because somebody said, well, he's too old to be president. Age is not the issue. Uh, the ability, the cognitive ability is what I have issue with. Um, and bless his heart, he's got some issues and he... I am, I, I'm really trying to understand the Democrat Party, why they would think this is somebody that we should get behind, Mark, to, to, for another four years. Do you believe it's going to make it that? Or, is, or do you believe, like Rick and I do, that somebody else will be there like mid-June? No, some, yeah, look, it's possible somebody else is going to be there. And I don't believe the Democrat Party believes it. I do believe that there are a group of people around him, including Jill Biden, that are actually running the country and it is in their best interest to keep him propped up. They want to keep their positions. They like the power. They like the policies they're pursuing. And they really have no opposition in the president. He doesn't have ideas of his own anymore. And so they're in control. That's human nature. They have the power. They don't want to give up the power. Yeah, amen. I don't. All right. Well, it's going to be, it's the big show. We're enjoying, we're enjoying watching it. Uh, to see what happens. All right, remember to keep watching here, Victory Channel, Victory News, and of course, Flashpoint. We'll, bring, we'll stay up to date on everything happening with what's going on in Israel. You can always count on us to bring you the truth every day at noon and five Eastern time. And of course, three nights a week right here with Flashpoint. Uh, let me say this, if you would like, this network is a total donor supported. What that means is people like me don't have to pay for the airtime that this is on this network. It's given to all the programmers to be able to do what they want to do with their program. So because of that, KCM, the Victory Channel, underwrites the entire operation of what it takes to run the network. They don't get money uh, from anybody else. They don't get, now, Flashpoint is a product of the Victory Channel. And if you'd like to support us, it's very simple. You can go to govictory.com slash fpgive if you want to go there, if you want to send it in the mail. Uh, Flashpoint, Fort Worth, Texas, 76192. And Flash to 36609 if you want to text to give. Of course, you can always call 877-281-6297. And yes, if you're wondering, all the gifts you give to Flashpoint will help us cover the airtime that we take up and the different events. It all goes in the same pot to help pay for what we're doing. And we're not backing down. Flashpoint's not backing down. We're not giving up. We're not going away. We're not going to go hide in a cave somewhere and pray for God to take us home. We're getting ready. We're amping up. We're multiplying. That's why you see people duplicate Flashpoint. Why? Because we are right of center. See you tomorrow night.